review of uh, neurological concepts, neuro nursing, anatomy and physiology by yours truly, Juanito Aymandia. I'm a registered physical therapist and a registered nurse in the Philippines. And I am a registered physical therapist assistant here in, and a registered nurse as well here in the United States of America. Let's start. Anatomy and physiology of the nervous system. Now, nervous system is very complicated, uh, complex, sophisticated uh, part of our body or the system of our body. The nervous system comprises your brain that is responsible for mandating, giving commands, and as well as uh, providing uh, sensory and as well as your motor functions as well. Now, let's See, nervous system itself divides into, into two major parts, which is your central nervous system and then your peripheral nervous system. Now, the central nervous system, which is the center part of our body, which is located in our brain itself, and then your spinal cord. We will tackle that later. And then peripheral nervous system divides into somatic, and then your autonomic nervous system. Now the somatic nervous system divides into your afferent and then your efferent nervous system, nerves. So the afferent is your sensory, while your efferent is your motor. Now your peripheral nervous system divides into your, directly into your, uh, I mean your autonomic nervous system is your uh, parasympathetic and their sympathetic nervous system going to talk talk about this later now let's start first with your the basic functional unit of the nervous system is your neuron this is the single cell unit of the nervous system that is responsible for transmission of all the impulses it has body parts which include your dendrites your the nucleus or the cell body and then your axon now every single unit of the nervous system is covered by myelin sheet to in, improve the impulses of your transmission of your stimuli. So these are compacted cells on your brain and then your spinal cord that is responsible for all the motor and the uh, uh, sensory impulses. Okay, now let's talk about the, uh, the brain and the spinal cord or the central nervous system. Now the central nervous system, it has 80% of that comes from the brain mass the brain weight okay and then the 10 percent would be uh, the cerebrospinal fluid or the csf and the other 10 percent is from the blood supply or in the blood nutrients remember this kelly monroe hypothesis is uh the skull is a closed vault so it is that the brain is enclosed on the skull and it's house and protect our brain so any increase in the component of the brain mass csf and the blood would lead to increase your icp or your intracranial pressure which is normally 10 to 20 so any increase in that will lead to uh, increase icp so remember if there is uh, inflammation or increase in brain tissue due to inflammation will lead to increase icp if there is increase in the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid due to obstruction leading to hydrocephalus would also increase to ICP. And the blood, if there are leak or like aneurysm or clotting, then what will lead to inflammation and what, that will lead to increased ICP as well. Now, for uh, the part of the brain, it has three parts, namely your uh, cerebrum, your cerebellum and then your brain stem now looking back here the cerebrum is the largest portion cerebellum is the second and then the brain stem is the uh, least part or the smaller part of the brain which divides into midbrain pons and medulla oblongata now let's talk about the, the cerebrum now the cerebrum is the largest portion of the brain which is has many lobes like the frontal lobe is responsible for thinking, like when you put your, your hand in and you're thinking, that's where your frontal brain is uh, functioning well. Your personality, your motor activity, like your mobility, 
intelligence, behavior, numbers, and speech as well is the cerebrum frontal lobe. Remember that, this one. Okay, next to that is your occipital lobe. Now the occipital lobe is here when somebody hits you on your on your back so it likes like you change your vision so because that is the function of your occipital lobe visual impulses for occipital lobe parietal lobe is here your parietal lobe which is on this portion which is responsible for all your sensory if frontal lobe is motor and then the parietal lobe is sensory so sensory impulses which include your your pain, the touch, pressure, heat, and cold difference that is for parietal lobe. Now, temporal lobe is here, the temple, which is near with your ear, and they're responsible for your hearing and a short-term memory. So those are the lobes of the brain for cerebrum. Next, the cerebellum. The cerebellum is here called the hindbrain, which is uh, the lesser brain. It controls the posture, gait, and the balance as well, or equilibrium. So if you have problem with this, you're gonna have uh, gait disturbances. You cannot maintain your posture. You cannot measure the distances because that is for balance and then uh, an equilibrium. There is a test for that called the Romberg's test that you let the client stand, stand like anatomical position. If there's a swaying for five to 10 minutes, so positive for Romberg's test, there are ataxia or unsteady gait, so, or either the client will lose balance and positive for Romberg's test, positive for affectation of cerebellum. Also finger to nose, alternate. If point on some part of your of your point somewhere so they're called dysmetria or calculation is impaired so it means the affectation of cerebellum you could also do the alternate uh, uh, supination and then pronation do it fast like like this so if unable to do that call this the adocokinesia affectation of cerebellum as well Next, the brainstem. Uh, brainstem is the least or the smallest part of the, uh, of the brain, which is divided into three parts, the midbrain, pons, and midala of longitude. Now, the midbrain is a relay station for sight and hearing, and as well as reaction to pupil. So when uh, you strike light, either it would constrict or dilate. So if there's a problem with this, it means your pupil is having a problem like uh, one is constricting and one's dilating called anisocoria or damage to midbrain. That's why uh, doctors will check your perla. Pupils equally rounded and reacted to light and accommodation. So if there is like affectation of that, then the brain stem or the midbrain is affected or your brain is affected. Aside from that, the, because the cranial nerve three and four arises to that, called your uh, trochlear and then your uh, oculomotor. So it means this innervates your uh, muscles for your pupil uh, reaction. So equal pupil is normal. So that's why it's called perla, as isochoria. So when you strike with the light on your eyes or shine, so it will react either accommodate. So that's for your uh, midbrain. Pons. Your pons is responsible for breathing. It, it controls your breathing. Your res called the respiratory center, like apneustic and the pneumotaxic center. So uh, uh, that's the pons. It regulates the depth and the rhythm of your breathing. So that's for pawns. Then also cranial nerves five, six, seven, eight arises on pawns. So cranial nerve number five is trigeminal. Cranial nerve number six is abducens. Seven is your uh, facial, and eight is your acoustic. 
Okay, so we're, that's pawns. Then Midala Oblongata, also responsible for uh, the numbers of breathing and the cardiovascular center because uh, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system will send signal to your Midala Oblongata to uh, stimulate or send signals apparently to the organs that is needed for increasing vital signs, respiration, uh, temperature, something like that. Okay, now Vidala Blanca is also important because the nucleus of the cranial nerve number 9, 10, 11, 12 originated. So cranial nerve number 9 is your glossopharyngeal, 10 is your vagus. That's why the vagal nerve of your parasympathetic here, so to decrease your heart rhythm. 11, which is your accessory spinal nerve, and then the 12 is your hypoglossal nerve. So that's, that's it. We'll tackle that cranial nerves later. Now also, Vidala Oblongata is responsible center for vomiting, hiccup, vasomotor center, sneezing, coughing, and swallowing. That's why this uh, 11 and 12 cranial nerve your uh, hypoglossal, I mean, and then uh, number nine, which is the glossopharyngeal, and the number 10 is the vagal, are for swallowing. So they are responsible for that. So any damage to that, would you have difficulty of swallowing? Okay, remember those things. Anatomy and physiology, the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is important because they are need to be stimulated to give impulses to target organs such as your uh, uh, especially your uh, gonad system for production of your uh, egg cell and then your uh, uh, testosterone hormone also for uh, antidiuretic hormones and everything so, okay let's start this now hypothalamus is 10 hats your thirst and water balance Adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary releasing hormone via your uh, uh, releasing factor. Then neurohypophysis releasing hormone, your antidiuretics hormone. Hunger and satiety center, autonomic regulation, temperature regulation, and sexual urge and emotion. So, this is like a, like a relay center, like impulses need to go on hypothalamus to send signal to other uh, organs like your higher center or the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland will release releasing factor to stimulate your uh, uh, adenohypophysis, uh, your anterior pituitary gland hormone, uh, which is responsible for re releasing factor of different uh, growth hormone, sex hormone, so that's it. And then your uh, neuro, uh, so neuro hypothesis called the posterior pituitary gland, they need to send signal first from uh, hypothalamus then to your P PPG or posterior pituitary gland to release this hormone, the antidiuretic hormone. So something like that's going on. So they are working it together. They stimulate first the hypothalamus to release factors that will release uh, hormones from a target organ. So that's your hypothalamus. Next, the thalamus is just a pathway or the major relay center for ascending sensory impulses to the cortex of your brain. Now the meninges, the meninges is divided into your, it's called the covering or the protection of your brain. We have the, the dura mater, arachnoid and pia mater. So these are the coverings of your brain that support and that gives protection from the brain. So it will damage first this one, like uh, if there are uh, uh, viruses or bacteria that goes to your brain, it will also attach to this part of, of the brain that would be uh, inflamed. So that will cause your meningitis. Okay, now the 
uh, artery supply, the uh, supply of the brain, blood supply of the brain is from your circle of wheels. So this is the major part portion of your uh, blood supply of the brain, the circle of wheel is called. So it has the internal carotid artery, the middle cerebral artery is from here. Internal carotid is there, this one. And then the basilar artery, which supplies this portion. So it means the, the middle portion supplied by the middle cerebral, the internal carotid artery supply the frontal, and the vascular artery supply in the posterior portion. So mostly these, when these are like occluded or having aneurysm, so this would, uh, depends on what area of the brain would be affected. Okay, next is the spinal cord. Now the spinal cord arises from medulla oblongata and then it terminates, go down like a thread, up to level of your L1 and L2. So that's the taper end of your spinal cord and it has like a horseshoe tail like this called the cauda equina. So uh, that's your spinal cord. It's all mostly like 20 inches long and it tapers and columns medullaris resemble a horse tail called the cauda equina. It contains a gray matter and a white matter which contains neuron. Now, if that's a gray matter because of combination of a lot of cells, it calls gray matter. Cluster of neurons. And then it calls white matter because it contains myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is the covering of uh, the neurons that protects and speed up transmission of the impulses. Now, let's talk about the spinal, uh, peripheral nervous system. Now, the peripheral nervous system uh, divides into spinal nerves and then the cranial nerves. The spinal nerves is 31 pairs, which cervical is 8, thoracic is 12, lumbar is 5, sacral is 5, and then your uh, coccygeal is 1, so 31 pairs. So looking back at the picture for this one, you see so from cervical area, we have eight. So every spinal nerve uh, uh, supplies your different muscles of your fingers or your neck to your limbs. And then thoracic is uh, from T1 to L2, which uh, T, uh, thoracic is 12, T1 to T12, which primarily support or innervates your trunk trunk area then the lumbar to sacral and coccygeal lumbar is five which supply the spinal nerves from your muscles of the lower extremities so and then your sacrum and then coccyx the sacrum and the coccyx mostly for your uh, bowel and bladder so if they are affected like when you do surgery they give um, anesthesia to that so you not feel anything so that's how it works so remember this affectations and then uh, innervation then of course the cranial nerves have 12 pairs of cranial nerves so that's what we're going to tackle, the cranial nerves. Now the cranial nerves is 12 cranial nerves. So what do we need to know about this? It's name 12, like uh, one is olfactory, two is optic, three oculomotor, four is stroke layer, five is trigeminal, six is abducens, Seven is facial, eight is auditory, nine is glossopharyngeal, ten is the vagus, eleven is accessory spinal, and the twelve is hypoglossal. So it has, that's the name. We have a code to that like O O O to touch and feel a girl's 
vagina ah a h that's what we i remember that oh 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 to touch and feel a girl's vag ah okay so o olfactory o optic o oculomotor two is stroke layer to touch to touch trigeminal teeth a of sense facial gl auditory glossopharyngeal vagus accessory spinal and hypoglossa now to know if these are sensory motor or mixed so it means that sensory for sensation like uh, smell okay so remember sensory is one two eight sensory one two eight one is olfactory two is optic which is for vision olfactory is for smell and then eight is for auditory or hearing if that is motor of pure movement at all that innervates are three four six eleven and twelve so what are those motor we have oculomotor so it means extra ocular eye movement so you have the movement of the eye so it innervates the oculomotor Four is stroke layer. Again, is extraocular movement, downward movement of the eye to the side, that's stroke layer. Six is abducence, also motor, which is lateral eye movement when you are looking to the side, that is your abducence. Eleven is accessory spinal, it's motor when you move or shrug your shoulder accessory spine because it innervates your trapezius muscle and last is 12 hypoglossal is motor for tongue movement when you move your tongue something like that so that's your tongue <laughs> okay that's for your hypoglossal or tongue remember motor 3 4 6 11 and 12 Three is oculomotor, four is stroke layer, six is abducens, eleven is accessory spinal, and twelve is hypoglossal. Remember that. Now, if that's a mix, it means it has sensory and motor functions. Two functions. So this includes your five, seven, nine and ten okay so five is trigeminal seven is facial nine is glossopharyngeal and ten is vagus as you can see here okay remember that mix is five seven nine and ten okay so what are the functions so five is trigeminal is a mix sensation and Oh, skin and of and face so when you touch your face that's trigeminal when you feel okay sensation of the face is trigeminal not facial remember that okay and also for mastication or uh, chewing that's trigeminal remember that okay so trigeminal sensation of the face and mastication or chewing then seven is facial is mixed facial expression or what we call the facial movement like when you smile when you laugh when you move your face to the side and everything or move your face that is facial remember and sensory part of the facial is the sensation of the tongue okay that's for facial. Then the nine is your glossopharyngeal. The glossopharyngeal is also responsible for swallowing and then sen sensation of the posterior portion of your tongue. So the two. So it was two, which is your facial and then your glossopharyngeal. Okay. 
And then the last is the Vegas, which is mix. The Vegas or the mix is the sensation of the pharynx and the larynx, and as well as phonation. Say ah, if you're able to pronounce it, that's the Vegas. Okay, and as well as the vagal, um, a vagal or the parasympathetic innervation, that is for Vegas. Okay, so remember this. When we say sensory, one, two, eight. When we say motor, three, four, six, 11, and 12. When it's mixed, five, seven, nine, and 10. Okay, and remember their functions. That's how it is for uh, cranial nerves, the 12th pair of the cranial nerves. Okay, now the autonomic nervous system divides into your sympathetic and then your parasympathetic. So remember this like uh, anticholinergic for sympathetic and cholinergic for, for parasympathetic. So mostly sympathetic is for like fight flight, like always on the go. So it will increase your vital signs. Also dilation of the pupil, dry mouth, constipation, increase heart rate and blood pressure and respiration and increase urinary retention and ejaculation so always on the go 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 so that is sympathetic while your parasympathetic is the opposite of your sympathetic which is the release of the acetylcholine and mostly you will feel relaxed so constriction of you feel increased salivation diarrhea decreasing heart rate blood pressure and respiration urinary frequency because the bladder is relaxed and then erection so erection first parasympathetic and then ejaculation so that's for sympathetic okay that will be all i hope you learned from my video and lecture if you like it thank you so much and have comments subscribe and, and enjoy watching uh, stay tuned for other videos and thank you so much.